Well, folks, it seems that a lot of you haven't watched the video I made about Damascus Steel with two local blacksmiths, and it has a lot of information that would be relevant for this review, so you might want to catch up on it. It'd be a shame if you didn't, and a stray pommel found you, wouldn't it? All right, so this time I'm gonna to try to keep it a little more concise than usual because supposedly short and sweet is better for videos, or at least that's what people with short videos will tell you. So this is the fanciest knife I found on Gearbest. When they asked me, so what other knives would you be interested in reviewing? I was like, what's your most expensive one? I'll take that. And this is what it is. It comes in a fancy wooden box. This was the most expensive one at the time. It's currently listed for 248.54 Canadian dollars. But a new one was released that costs more. So it's no longer the most expensive one. Son of a goat. Got a snap button, it opens up. And here is the fancy knife. This is a $250 Gearbest knife. Now, it's probably going to be on sale when I upload this video, and if it is, I'll post the links down below. There will also be a fourth year anniversary sale on Gearbest, and which they apparently do in three stages to be extra fancy, extra appreciative, extra sale -y. So much for more concise, huh? Asumi. So this is um, Damascus steel. So this is why I refer to the video I made about that. The more correct term is pattern welded steel. And uh, this has the same problem that I mentioned in those two videos, one of the two, because this doesn't actually say what it is. It just says Damascus. That's really no useful information. I need to know which steels were pattern welded into this. I don't even know if it's stainless or high carbon steel. It just doesn't say. So the thing is very pretty and all. You can see the layers and it's got some inlaid brass, which does look quite nice. Lots of decorative touches. There's a band of who knows what. I'm guessing it might be horn in between here and a black band as well. So as I said, a lot of different contrasts. The antler handle is a little rounder than I personally like, but it's still oval in cross section. So not really an issue. So it's got the natural texturing from the antler, which gives it a bit of grip, not as much as a lot of other knives. So this could slip in the hand more easily. Here's the sharpness out of the box. Very sharp. I can see probably, it's probably close enough for you to see that there's a little bit of tearing in the paper. So. You could smooth this out some more if you were to strop this. This would be stupidly sharp. Technical term, stupidly sharp. And uh, yeah, so definitely a good edge. Now, it doesn't do push cuts. I have to slice to get that, but it's still perfectly adequate either way. Okay, let's see how it does. Welcome to my dirty cluttered balcony. It's not even mine, I just rent it. Sad, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, that's definitely a good edge. Let's see if I choke up on it. Yeah, I can cut with a good amount of pre precision. Precision. I don't even know what this is. Found it on the beach. Random wood. Yeah, it definitely cuts well. Can probably also use the tip for finer work. Yeah. That works quite nicely. Let's see if this causes any issues. And definitely not something I would normally do with a knife like this. This is really just to see if there are any problems with the steel, which I, I doubt, you know, even though they don't say what type of steel it is, at least they give you the the Rockwell hardness, which is 58 HRC, which is actually pretty good. That's uh, definitely hard enough. Got some paracord as well. Hmm, that was nice and easy. Just realized I haven't actually checked if it's shaving sharp. It's of course not a good idea to do this after 
cutting wood. Although never mind, it still is. That's a good sign. And now some cardboard cutting in the kitchen of all places. Can't be random enough, can it? Okay, so... Cardboard is pretty hard on the edge, in general. So this is not exactly a six month long term edge retention test, but ain't nobody got time for that, right? So based on this, it seems like a great knife. It handles well, it cuts very well, edge retention, as far as the first impression is concerned, seems good. The only question is, is it good enough for the price tag? Now, if you get it on sale, I would definitely recommend checking it out. You know, if, if you like how it looks, then yeah, nothing wrong with it, really. Now, as I personally, I prefer a somewhat different handle shape, but if you're into the quote-unquote retro stuff and more classic traditional handle shapes, then yeah, there's nothing wrong with it at all. One thing to keep in mind is you probably have to maintain this a little more diligently than other knives, which you probably would anyway, because it is a pretty one. But uh, because it has this, this rough finish here, like these, these little divots here for decoration, dirt can definitely uh, gather there more easily than on a perfectly smooth blade. In general, I've had good experiences with HX Outdoor so far. I'd even say it's probably the best manufacturer on Gearbest, and they don't seem to be stealing anyone else's design. It all seems to be their own designs, which is nice. I'm also going to put a link to this knife down there, which is also HX Outdoors, and this is my favorite that they make so far. So yeah, hope you like the review, found it interesting, maybe also a little bit entertaining with me goofing off a little bit, and uh, Thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks. Goes for 240, uh, 200. <laughs> Let's try that again. 248 was correct. And I tried to overcorrect it into 284, which is bullshit. This is the cheap, cheap. No, it's not the cheap. It's not even close. It's the most expensive. Ah. <laughs> uh. One of those days, outtakes galore. Uh, by the way, if in the outtakes I say the same thing over and over again, I don't actually script my videos. But, you know, I say something, and if I like it, I will, if I mess it up, I will try to get the same thing again. Because I have a short-term memory. It works sometimes. I'm gonna try to keep it a little... I'm gonna keep it a little Cthulhu. At least that's people what... People what... What short videos have. It's still over, over, overlord, <laughs> overlord.